In this video, we're talking about half-lives of radioactive nuclei. Well, first thing is, what is a half-life? Well, it's just how much time it takes for one half of a sample of any radioactive nucleus to decay to where there's only one half of the amount that we started with left. And one nice thing is that the half-lives of any given isotope is constant. Doesn't matter how much of that stuff we have at any time, it takes whatever that half-life is that amount, of, that amount of time for it to decay to half the original amount. So let's say we have iodine-131, 20 milligrams. After one half-life, we'll have half of that 20, which is 10 left, 10 milligrams. After another half-life, two half-lives, we'll have half of the 10, which is 5 milligrams left. And after the third half-life, we'll have half of 5, which is 2.5 milligrams. And whatever this time is, whatever the half-life is, it's the same from here to here, here to here, here to here, it stays constant for that isotope. Of course, different isotopes have vastly different half-lives from billions of years to fractions of a second. So let's look at some examples. And as we look at these examples, it's gonna be important to figure out what we're being given and what we're being asked because that's going to determine how you set the problem up. In this problem, we're told that we have um, carbon-15 and we're told what its half-life is, 2.4 seconds. What we want to find is how much of a given amount of the sample is left after a given amount of time. So we're told what the half-life is, how much we start with, 240 grams, and <clears throat> how long, how, how much time has passed, 12 seconds have gone, gone by. So this is gonna be a two-step uh, problem. First step's always gonna be in a problem like this where we wanna know how much of this stuff is left is we want to find out how many half-lives have gone by. All you do to do that is take the amount of time that's passed and divide by the half-life. So 12 seconds have gone by divided by 2.4 seconds for each half-life, and that tells us that five half-lives have gone by. Okay, now that we know that, we can approach it one of two ways. Either we can take how much we started with and cut it in half five times. So 240 divided by two is 120, that's one half-life. Divided by two again, that's two half-lives is 60, 30, 15. And after five half-lives, we see that we have 7.5 grams left. And that's the answer. Another way to do that, and this always works, again, when the problem is you want to find out how much of the sample is left, and you're told what the half-life is and how much time has gone by, so you can figure out how many half-lives there are and how much you start with, you can just take the amount that you start with, that was 240 grams, times one half raised to the power of however many half-lives have gone by. In this case, five, the power of five here is because five half-lives have gone by. And it's always one half here though. So if you plug this into your calculator, you'll get the answer, 7.5 grams. You can do this type of problem either way, whatever is easier for you. The other type of problem we can, another type of problem we can do with this is we can figure out how long it takes for a given sample to, to decay to a certain amount. So we have cesium-137, this isotope, and we're told what its half-life is, 30 years. We want to know how long it takes for a 60 gram sample to decay to 7.5 grams. So we're told what the half-life is, we're told how much we start with, how much we end up with, and we want to find out how long it takes. So once more, the first thing we're going to want to do is find out how many half-lives have gone by. So if we take how much we start with, cut it in half, keep cutting it in half until we get to the amount that we're told we have. So 60 divided by 30 is, uh, excuse me, 60 divided by 2 is 30, that's one half-life. 30 divided by 2 is 15, that's two half-lives. And 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. So three half-lives have gone by. So now that we know how many half-lives have gone by, we want to find out how much time has gone by. Well, we know how much time goes by for each half-life, 30 years, right? So we just take the number of half-lives times the half-life itself, the, in other words, the time per one half-life, and that tells us that, in this case, 90 years will have gone by. So another type of problem we can do with half-lives is like this. So we have 1.2 milligrams of phosphorus-32, and we know that it, deca it decays to 0 0.30 milligrams, 1.2 milligrams to 0.30 milligrams in 28.6 days. What's the half-life? So here, we're told how much we start with, how much we end up with, how long has gone by, and we're trying to find the half-life. 
So once more, we figure out how many half-lives have gone by. So we start with 1.2, cut it in half. That gives us 0 0.60, that's one half-life. Cut that in half, 0 0.30, that's two half-lives. That's how much we have. So we know that two half-lives have gone by. We also know that the total time is 28.6 days. So if we just take the total time, 28.6 days, divided by the number of half-lives, two in this case, that gives us how many the time per half-life. 14.3 days per half-life, or we say that to the time the half-life for T1 half is equal to 14.3 days.